It's uh, Michael Patrick Shields, radio stations across the state of Michigan. Speaking of freedom, Greg McNeely is with us from the Michigan Freedom Fund and uh, from West Michigan on our AT&T line. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Michael Patrick. You heard me playing a Second World War song there that uh, Vera Lynn sang and people rallied around. They had hope. This is, uh, although the word unprecedented is often used, and it may be true, uh, there have been examples of uh, plagues in the not so past. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, really, but remind us, if you would. Sure. And this is not unprecedented, and it's not uh, a World War II situation. Uh, previous generations have faced much tougher issues with much less technology and much less science and, and, and have prevailed. Um, and so uh, part of it, I think, is everyone needs to just understand the context, understand history a little bit, take a deep breath and, and be calm. In 1968, we lost uh, tens of thousands of Americans due to um, uh, a flu ac- epidemic from Asia. Uh, we lost even more during the Spanish flu of 1918 and 1919. And then you have to remember in that one, there was that second wave that was even more deadful. Uh, mm. And the fatality rate was um, even even higher for those that were infected. And we didn't understand uh, uh, the way viruses spread uh, 100 years ago as well. So um, we have a lot more tools and a lot more ways to deal with it. Uh, this is something that we'll get through. I think through the lens of history, we'll find that uh, um, we probably did more damage to our economies than our health um, because of ineffective public policy making. But you know, now's the time for everyone to do what they can do, and the private sector has been leading the way. You saw uh, the NBA start with the closures and the loss of a billion dollars in their industry by shutting down March Madness and the NBA tournaments. Uh, and government didn't ask them to do that. Uh, they just did it. And uh, I think you see that all across this country, that you see private actors doing what they can in their sphere of influence, whether it's social distancing or converting distilleries to making sanitizer, uh, um, to gearing up uh, GM, Ford, and Chrysler to make ventilators. I mean, there's all sorts of things that if, if you can do something, do it. If you can't do anything else, social distance. And that's what's great about this country is we're very resourceful and that we don't need government to get us through this. They're the ones that are making the mistakes. Um, but uh, the private citizens, the private actors, the churches, the civic organizations, they're the ones that are solving this crisis, and it's a great thing to see. What did you do today? What can I do today? What are all of us doing today, even if it is as... Uh simple as putting up Christmas lights to cheer people up when they walk by. And our man Tony Cuthbert here, the orchestra director and producer of this program, knows firsthand because his wife, Christy, is going to be on the front lines today, Tony, isn't she? She sure sure is, Michael Patrick. She usually deals with outpatients at a local hospital, and today she has been tasked with being in the triage tent, and she will be taking vitals and observing everybody before they walk into the hospital, and she's going to have the full garb on. So I wish her luck today. Which tent uh, will that be and where? It's going to be St. Joseph Mercy in Chelsea. If you see her, say hi for me, because I won't see her all day. So there's a tent out front of the hospital so that they can assess the situation of the person who might be coming into that environment, and she will be the first person that they have point of contact with? Absolutely correct, and you will see this at every hospital throughout the state and country. It should be underway as we speak. And then, uh, so she'll assess the person and say, hmm, symptoms, not symptoms, that's what she'll do today? Yes, correct. And how will she protect herself during that process? She will have on everything just shy of a hazmat suit is what she told me. She will have multiple masks and protective clothing. And, of course, she's going to have to deal with the elements. I don't know what kind of tent this will be, but Hmm. it's going to be uh, an experience. There's no question. First time she's ever had to do anything like this. But it's all hands Hmm. on deck. Hmm. Gosh, it wasn't that long ago you saw her in a wedding gown, and now you see her in a hazmat suit. It's got to be surreal for you and your family. Are you concerned about uh, her and coming home after working like that? They have put a lot of precautions in place, MPS, Mm -hmm. and they are on top of it. They have instructed every single employee to bring a change of clothes with them, and when they clock out at the end of the day, change everything 
leave your shoes at the hospital and depart and go home. And if you can, first thing you do, do not touch your children. Do not say hi to your husband or wife, whatever it may be, and go directly to the shower. Hmm. Well, thank you for sharing that. Greg McNeely, a final word? Uh, be positive. Love, uh, love everyone. Share positive news and do your part. Thank you very much, and thank you uh, to the Amway Corporation, which is cranking out hand sanitizer as fast as they possibly can, and I understand donating it to area hospitals as well. He's Greg McNeely, Michigan Freedom Fund, Michael Patrick Shields, radio stations all across the state of Michigan through the AT&T microphones on a Firekeepers Casino Friday.